the Brits really know how to do romantic comedies. Full Weddings and a Funeral, released in 1994 and directed by Mike Newell, who's also directed such films like Enchanted April, Into the West, Danny Briesco, and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, one of my favorite Harry Potter films. And this film has a huge ensemble cast of Hugh Grant, Andy McDowell, Kristen Scott Thomas, Simon Callow, James Fleet, John Hanna, Colette Coleman, David Bauer, Corin Redgrave, and Rowan Atkinson. And here we are again, this is another PayPal donation from Mr. and Mrs. Rusted Beetle, and guys, they are the biggest supporter of this channel, and they keep supporting me and send me huge donations. I mean, how can I not pay them back by doing their recommendations? And this was one of them. If any of you want to kind of dethrone them as the reigning PayPal donation champions, you can make a PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel by selecting the donate button, and you can attach your movie to your donation. Any size donation will do. If I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, and publish my review as quickly as I possibly can. But the Rusted Beetles, they're on a roll. Anyone else on there want to dethrone them? Because if they keep donating and keep supporting, I gotta keep delivering. Four Weddings and a Funeral focuses on a small circle of friends who engage in a number of social occasions and the different romances that they experience at each one of them. The film starts at a wedding where we have our best man, Charles, played by Hugh Grant, as he makes acquaintances of American Carrie, played by Andy McDowell. And their paths keep crossing at every wedding and funeral that they experience over the next several years. But will Charles finally muster up the guts to tell Carrie just how he feels about her? Probably it's a romantic comedy. I would say if he didn't, that would make this a romantic dramedy, because that's a pretty dramatic and sad ending if he never did. Four Weddings and a Funeral. I had always heard of this film and I've never watched it before, and thankfully it was free on Amazon Prime. I don't think it's on there, I, I think I caught it just on the tail end. But this film was nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards, and it actually turned out to be quite a wonderful surprise for me. I'm always a little timid while watching a British comedy, because I think there's a lot of you know, inside jokes, or at least jokes that typically Great Britain and the United Kingdom would understand, but us over here in America, or at least to my ignorant brain, I wouldn't understand, or at least I wouldn't get. So a lot of, of the comedy, I think, in the film that a lot of other people would get just kind of goes over my head. But nicely enough, I was pleasantly surprised that I was pretty much following along through this entire thing. And I want to say, like, this was the rise of Hugh Grant as your you know, big leading man in these romantic comedy films. He's just so cute and so charming, and his character is just so awkward that he's absolutely likable and lovable. However, I gotta be honest, I, I, I don't understand the sex appeal of Hugh Grant. I don't know, I mentioned that to my wife and she goes, oh, I do, which I'm sure I'm in the minority of, but I, I, I don't get it. He's a good looking fellow, but I always find his, at least on-screen personas to be a little awkward. But maybe that's the charming thing about it. I, I don't know. But anyway, I think this was the beginning of the rise of his dominance in the romantic comedy genre, because he is a huge heartthrob when it comes to films dealing with oh, a torn and separated love, or at least trying to find love in, in heightened events like this. I guess there's no better place to find love than at a wedding that's not yours. And he plays a, just a wonderful, likable character here. Yes, he's a little bit of a playboy and a little bit of a slut going around and sleeping with a bunch of women, but this film does a great job of showing just how innocent of a person he is and how much of a heartthrob he is, I guess. Andy McDowell, who I typically l like to see in films, I really loved her in Groundhog's Day, that's probably where I know her most from, she was a little cardboardish to me. Like, I have lines and dialogue and I am delivering them. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just because she was the only American in this film, but it just, she did not work for me. She did not fit for me in this whole ensemble. Rowan Atkinson shows up in here and he is just a powerhouse of comedy in, in anything that he does. He's one of those people that whenever he's on screen, you just start laughing because you know something funny is about to happen. I don't know, has he ever done any dramatic work or any serious work? 
if he has, I feel bad for him. Because I think he's one of those actors like Jim Carrey or Robin Williams that fits into that mold of, hey, whenever their face appears on screen, you start laughing because you're expecting comedy. And we get that. He plays a a priest in training and when he's delivering it's a second wedding and when he's delivering the vows and the speeches he keeps mixing up names and mispronunciating names which i've i've done <laughs> i understand the pressure of being the master of ceremonies of a, of a wedding i am a certified officiant and i have officiated two weddings i'm batting one for two so that's fit that's that's batting 500. That's, that's good, right? But I attach myself so much to his character because he's up there freaking out. He's so nervous. And I completely understand. Of course, he goes way over the top and he's saying her, his name is hers and her name is his. And uh, things are not being communicated correctly in the script. I love Rowan Atkinson. He's hilarious. But the big surprise to me, or at least the big standout for me, was Simon Cowell, who plays just, uh, just this big personality. And whenever he goes to a wedding, he is all in. He's, everyone drink, be merry, let's have a good time. My god, I could listen to him do audiobooks from now until the end of time. Because that man's delivery, his diction, his pronunciations, it's just, oh, it's just... It's music. He also has a kick-ass beard in this film, and I'm I'm a stickler for facial hair, and that man, he did good. I love the film's costuming. I love the, the settings of all four of these situations, the four weddings and the funeral. I think everything, like the set, looked beautiful. These four weddings are all definitely, you know, high-end classic weddings. You're not getting any contemporary shit here. There's no DJs playing at the receptions. There's no officiant like me that's kind of, you know, easygoing, not really attached to, to God and all of that stuff. But hey, let's focus on the love between you two. No, this is classic wedding. Everyone is dressed up in their best tuxes. They are in these beautiful classic looking churches. And uh, yeah, I can see a lot of people wanting their weddings after this film was released, wanting their weddings to look like one of these weddings in this film. I just think this film was an overall lovely time. Did it make me, you know, roll on the ground laughing? No, this was all kind of subtle humor, but it was, it was delightful. That's, that's the best word I can use to describe this film. It's just delightful. And it ended up t tugging at my heartstrings when we get to the funeral aspect of the title. I wasn't expecting to being that attached to uh, whoever ends up passing away. I didn't find myself attaching to them, but it happened, and I was I was feeling the emotions. So this film made me care about these characters when I didn't realize it was happening. As it was going along, I'm realizing like, oh, I'm I'm actually connecting with these characters a lot. Even though it's a little intimidating with it being a British comedy, trying to make myself follow along with accents and the culture and the situations. But I ended up really loving this movie. The climax is cheesy as hell. I'll be honest, it almost ruined the whole thing for me. I don't know if, if I felt like it was just stereotypical, even though this film came out in 1994. Maybe this was one of the first ones that started this whole thing. But the whole confession of love in the rain the the just monotone delivery i'm wet but i love you it just it didn't do it for me this film overall was a success and i was loving it that last little bit though oh. <laughs> just give it a rewrite please or can we shoot it again and try emoting please it's a great time though i think this is everyone who's into ro romance and comedies should definitely check this one out at least once i'm gonna give four weddings and a funeral four out of five blu-rays i like it a lot so everyone, since this was a PayPal donation, it was shoehorned in here, so we will be continuing on our regular schedule as normal. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, I will be getting back to doing just random recommendations at a whim here in the next couple of months. So if any of you have recommendations, leave a comment below this video, or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or my Twitter, leave your recommendation there. If I have access to it, I will watch, review it, and give you a shout on the channel. Again, if you want to help support me, you can make a PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel channel 
you want to recommend a movie, that would be great. If you just want to help support the channel, too, you can make a PayPal donation. I, I can't tell you how much I, I appreciate and just love you guys so much that do that. So, guys, if you've seen Four Weddings and a Funeral, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below. Let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time I release my next movie review. So, guys, I will see you next time on the channel. But in the meantime, be well. Be good to each other and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.